I need an ASP Scout. It's a ship that I've put off buying because to say that the general feeling towards this ship is negative would be a massive understatement. But I want to review them all so the time has come to throw some credits at the nearest ship sales emporium and pick one up. Don't get me wrong, I can afford this ship, but given that over recent years AI has been setting the world on fire, it's high time I put baby Skynet to task and asked it to build me a ship. So here's the plan. Chat GPT will spec me a ship with a budget of 1 million credits. That ship will then go and earn me nigh on 4 million credits, which is the undiscounted price of an ASP Scout, by unaliving some NPCs out there. So let's see what we can get. Okay, so looking at the build, there are some positives here. I do like a Viper Mark III, although it's been a long time since I flew one without any engineering. And since ChatGPT didn't specify any engineering, I can't add any to the build to make performance better. Looking at the core internals, the first thing I wonder is whether ChatGPT is going hard on the cybernetic crack pipe. On the face of it, it's not a bad build, but then you need to take the budget into account. Going A-rated with a full-size power plant and thrusters blows the budget out of the water on its own. But this is a challenge, so again, I need to follow the spec. ChatGPT didn't mention the size of the core internals, only the rating, so I'll have to cut some corners here. At least it'll make the ship light, even if it's underpowered and slow. For the optional internals, we've got a little bit of flexibility. I'll need to downsize the shield in order to keep within budget, but for weapons I can apparently pick anything as long as it's fixed or gimbaled. As tempting as it is to load up on rail guns and plasma accelerators, I'm pretty sure they'll blow the downsized distributor in no time. So I'll go with the tried and tested mix of pulse lasers and multi cannons. I'm also thinking I'll go with gimbaled weapons because whilst I'll take a hit on the damage output, I should be able to compensate for the smaller thrusters throwing off my aim. As for the rest of the internals, I'll grab a size 2 shield, the two suggested utilities, and I would have liked to throw a shield cell bank into this to bolster the pathetic shields, but I can't see any way of getting a shield cell bank in there while staying within the power that I've got available. So here we have it. Sitting on this pad is the abomination that Chat GPT set out, and in light of this, she's been christened Skynet's offensive to make reference to her origins. It's time to see what this little creation is made of, what with its undersized internals and bog standard weaponry. At this point, it feels like death is not just a possibility, but inevitable. The ship barely has enough power to function without the weapons deployed, and then deploying them just overloads the power plant. A small overcharge would fix the issue, but again, no engineering. Instead, deprioritizing the cargo hatch gave just about enough juice to function, but it is pretty much on the limit. Also, to make things more challenging, I've thrown all my credits into my carrier bank, so my wallet is effectively empty. Let's crack on. First off was taking on a Fret 1's weapon fire signal source. Dispatching a mostly harmless eagle was basically child's play and it was a little bit of a low earner. To get the money needed via this route would be so destroying and take ages, so that's a no-go. Next up was a normal resource extraction site. Nothing too tricky here, but the effects of a few fights and some stupid decisions started to take their toll. With 1.7 million credits ready to be cashed in, it was time to head back, get my money, and make a few small adjustments to the firing groups. Heading back out, there was then a choice. I could head back to the same site, do the same drills over the same spec opponents, or I could take the difficulty up a notch and do something silly like bringing this ship to the Hazraz. And this was possibly my first stupid decision. Spotting an Imperial Courier, it seemed like this would be the first challenging win. My regular Viper would squish this thing like a bug on the canopy, but this isn't my regular Viper. 
This is the budget, cut down, unengineered Viper with standard weapons and subpar power distribution and handling. It was a long, drawn out fight, but in the end, there was only one result utter failure. And back to the dock to come up with a new strategy. Given that the money for the rebuy was in the kitty now, this wasn't over. Nor was the idea of a victory in the Hazrez. It was time to have a nut up or shut up. This time it started better. A wild eagle appeared and was promptly dispatched, proving that this ship is capable of getting some small gains in the Hazrez. Next up was a python, but thanks to its shield cell banks, it was time to make a tactical withdrawal. Basically, run away with my viper's tail tucked between his legs in shame. So the basic resource sites were a decent ish earner. The Hazrez was proving a little bit too hot for the Viper to handle in this configuration, and it was time for a compromise and to head to the high resource extraction zone, and my god, did this pay off. With some more challenging enemies and the support of the local security forces, the credits kept rolling in. And also, isn't this Mr. Roberts of Star Citizen fame? Well, if it was, he's very much past tense now, but I digress. With the kill count going up, the credits kept rising and rising. One million, two million, three million. With everything added up, we were there. We were on top of the damn galaxy, given that we started this with no credits in the wallet, and compared to that, we were now rolling in it. So, with the ship repaired and bounties handed in, we ended up here. We have an ASP scout on the pad and another Viper in the hangar to come out for another day. So what does this prove? Aside from asking ChatGPT to design a ship on a budget is going to lead to compromise and not the ideal sort. Well firstly it proves that you could take a small ship and get yourself on the path to upgrading fairly quickly. It also proves that as useful as engineering is you can get by without, at least in a PvE situation. Knowing your ship and what it is and isn't capable of is key, although this might be a poor workman blaming his tools. That's not for me to decide though. With all that said and done, what's next for Skynet's offensive? It's earned the right to survive another day. She's not being decommissioned or stripped for parts, but instead she'll be going back into the hangar for another day. Maybe we'll ask ChatGPT to modify the spec to make it more offensive. Maybe just by tacking on some engineering or throwing another million at it. This is all something for the future, but if you want to look at the build of the ship at the moment, I'll pop that in the description. If you've got any other ideas where you want to go with this, let me know. In the meantime, I'll continue writing up the next couple of reviews that are in progress and start getting to know my ASP scout. Getting to know if it's as bad as the general consensus says. Until next time, 07.